how to make an espresso. Well, you've bought your nice, fancy, expensive machine and you've got a hopper full of lovely, fresh coffee beans, but unfortunately about 90% of coffees sold in the UK are poor standard. Look at all those beans, they come thousands of miles, but unfortunately, when you, or when cafes and restaurants hit the espresso button, they sadly get something which doesn't live up to expectation. So here we go. We've got some espressos which are probably like 90% of the coffees that come out of an espresso machine in this country. It's either old coffee or more likely the grinder set up wrong. This is a really common problem. Water is just rushing through the coffee. It's not picking up any of the oils at all. And as a consequence, you're going to get a really thin tasting coffee. The crema that you can see there is light. There's no depth to it. And uh, all this really is down to two points. Either the coffee is old, which is quite common, or the grinder set up wrongly. And that's really, really common. In fact, probably more common than you think. There's only a few places in the country that actually do good espressos. And why is it so important? Well, it's because espressos go into nearly every single drink you make from your espresso machine. You won't sell that many espressos on their own, but if you get this bit right, get the shot of coffee coming out correctly to start with, then all your lattes and cappuccinos and americanos will taste good as well. So, what can we do to rectify this problem? Well, first of all, you've got to start off with good coffee. Don't be tempted to use 100% Arabica coffee for espresso machines to start with. It's difficult coffee to use, and you tend to end up with a result like this, even though if you've got everything else right. Here we've adjusted the grinder slightly, so we're slowing the coffee down. The coarseness of the coffee has been reduced, so it's much finer, and the water's struggling to get through it a little bit more. In this instance, it's coming through in about 15 seconds. Still too quick, but look at the difference to start with. You've got a much more golden crema on the espresso. It's still too thin, remember. And after a few seconds, or after a 60, 30 seconds or so, the crema's disappeared. So concentrate on your grinder. Nearly everything to do with your coffee is controlled by your grinder. So first of all, use fresh coffee beans, ideally less than 24 hours from opening. They've got to be fresh, especially with espresso coffee beans because it's so oily. Then adjust your grinder coarseness and dosage. There's a separate video on how to do this because this is such a crucial point for espresso coffees. And it's a good idea to mark the grinder once you've done it. To test your espressos, do the sugar test. Put some sugar on the top and it should stay on the top for a couple of seconds before it falls through. That one just failed, it didn't work. We know it's wrong. Okay, here we've slowed down the coffee even a little bit more, now to a 21 second extraction time. This is more like it. You can see the crema forming and after probably about 10 seconds that forms its own distinct layer. It's settling a little bit like Guinness. There you go, look at that crema, what a difference. In glass you can actually see the thickness. And do the sugar test again. This time it passes. Look how long it stays on the top before it falls through. That's what you're looking for. That's what your espresso should be all about. And once again. Now, test your espressos now and do the sugar test and see if it passes. If you've got everything working together, then you should get that result. Here we're using something slightly different. We've got rid of all the spouts and everything and we're using a bottomless portafilter. This time we've got the extraction about 20, 22, 23 seconds or so. The creme is much, much thicker. It's not passing over any metal surfaces at all. Now I must admit I haven't got my machine set up perfectly there, but what a difference. Look at the thickness of that creme. And after again, after, a, I don't know, five, 10 seconds or so, that will settle as it is there. And when somebody drinks that, they're sipping that really nice, oily, creamy top to it. That's what espressos are all about. That's what you should be getting. Okay. Okay, here we come on to some common problems that 
we have when we're making espressos. The most common problem is actually overfilling the cup. Here we've got the really nice extraction to start with. Two of them. But what a lot of people do is they continue to pour water through the group heads to top up the cup, essentially. And this is what happens, essentially. You fill the cup up with relatively bitter, insipid, call it what you want, but it's not what you uh, really would call an espresso. And if you're continuing to top up your cup with water through the group head, you're basically adding the cup on the right to the one on the left. If we continue to do this even more, which is what some people do when they make Americanos, they just run water through the group heads, you get the one on the uh, on the right there again. Well, look at these three all in a row. The espresso to start with, then what a lot of people add to it just to top the cup up, thinking they're going to be generous to the customer. They're not really. They're not doing them any, any favours any favors at all. It's not perfect, the one on the um, at the front there, but it's much better than the other two. So it's a good idea to measure what you think is um, the right measure for espresso, which is about 30 mils. Put that into a cup and don't go past that point. This is what you're doing if you're topping it up to the top of the rim there. You're wrecking it. That won't be a very nice espresso to drink at all. And look at the white streak on top. That's a good indicator that you've over extracted. Another really common problem, and check this on your own machine, are leaky group head seals. You've probably seen that quite often actually, and it's a sign that you need to do something or get an engineer in to change your seals. They're relatively cheap to change, but if you get any drips of water like that, then change your group head seals. It means that when you come to clean it, you're not going to be cleaning it correctly and you're not going to get the right pressure through the group heads. And if you have slight differences in levels as these two are, all it means is that your machine isn't quite um, level. So here are my top tips for espressos. Use fresh espresso coffee beans, really important. Stale ones you won't get the creme, you won't get the flavour. Take some time to set up your grinder properly. Make sure your machine is really, really clean. There's other videos on these to show you how. Don't overfill your cup, otherwise you'll ruin your espresso. And after you've done all that, Cheers. you do stand a chance of making a great espresso. Now we haven't covered everything here to do with espressos, there's an awful lot more to this subject and we'll come on, though, come on to those on other videos.